Oh my God, they're just everywhere. This is the worst I've ever seen. Well, welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. In this episode, we have every intention of painting our C5 Corvette, but things just did not go well. Let's roll the tape. Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. Well, the day is finally here. We're gonna show you our inflatable spray booth and how we're gonna get a beautiful spray job right in our own home garage. So here it is, folks. This is a sew and flaw spray booth and we've got the elephant trunk all hooked up. Now, in order for these spray booths to work properly, you're going to need to use the elephant trunk with the exhaust fan. Now, this elephant trunk was very easy to set up. And once the whole frame is assembled, then from that point, you go ahead and put the sleeve cover over the whole entire frame. It comes with a nice filter so we can suction out all of those contaminants and overspray before it hits the atmosphere. And before it does that, it's being sucked out with an explosion proof blower. Very important for the explosion proof blower Everything's concealed inside the motor so you won't have any issues. So you always want to play it safe no matter where you're at. When you're doing any type of job, not even paint, you always want to make sure you take the safest precaution measures. So we're going to show you a little bit about the booth. So we talked about the elephant trunk. Now the elephant trunk has two exhausts. So if you wanted to port it up towards the roof or if you're doing the conventional way just like this. Now I might push the limits just a little bit and in the future, put another blower here and exhaust it out, but that might collapse the booth. That's something that we have a little concern about. So on this episode, we're gonna take you through all of the paint booth issues you can run into and how to get the most effective spray job out of one of these guys. So if you've been following the channel, you know that this is our Corvette, our C5, and we're doing it in parts. Now, you can do a whole car in one of these spray booths. However, it's not gonna turn out the way you want. They just don't move the amount of air that a regular paint booth will. Now, with this over here, with the elephant trunk, we're hoping that it does push out the air. If you don't have the elephant trunk, then you're depending on right here, just the air coming through that vent to push out the overspray through the filters and that's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna be honest with you, you need to get this elephant trunk. It's an added expense, but if you're gonna be painting a few cars, wherever you're doing it, it's really gonna help you guys out. Now the reason why I say don't do the whole entire car is because there will be a lot of fumes in here. And for this particular vehicle, it is a bigger vehicle. So we pulled it all the way to the right and now we have this area to spray our door, quarter, and our deck lid. And then in the coming videos, we'll go ahead and you'll utilize the other side. I don't want to get too caught up in spraying too much. I just really want to take my time here. We can see everything here is prepped out with a 600 grit and it's nicely masked up just the way we would do at the shop. So without further ado, I'll let you peek real quick at my air system and we'll start spraying and seeing how well it works. And here's the air setup, guys. Now, if you watch some of my videos, you know I did the air setup so it would cool it. And then I have the air filter here that will get rid of any of the oils or any other debris. Now, I was talking to my buddy Candyman. If you guys don't watch his channel, you need to watch it and subscribe. But he's like, you know what? You can't be spraying at home unless you got one of these air refrigerators on there. Now, this is a D12, and I'll do a little bit more better video in the future dedicated to this. But... Basically, this is like a refrigerator that your airline is going to run through before it hits the paint. So nice, cool air that doesn't have any humidity or doesn't have any contaminants in it is going to be the best possible paint job. So we're trying to do the best thing here. You guys don't need to do this at home if you're just spraying one car. But if you're looking to do like, you know, a nice setup, consider something like this. So this is the first time we're really going to be using a 3060. It's got a 30 uh, gallon tank, but it runs at the capacity of a 60. So we'll check that out. We have a dedicated uh, airline here. Remember, when we go to paint, I don't ever want to paint off the hose reel because all the turns and everything, you lose a lot of the air pressure. So a dedicated airline, 
um, is a good idea. And uh, we're ready to go. This thing is going to be going right into the booth. The booth is sitting a little bit crooked because when we pulled in the uh, Corvette, it kind of pulled in the bottom um, part of the paint booth and kind of scrunched it in a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much. So the first thing we're going to be doing is getting into the black base, which is the ground coat, and then we'll hit up the blue. And the paint we're using once again is the OEM Select. It's the same color off of my Acura. So we're going with a black and blue theme here. So we're not doing the jams, but the top will be black still and the jams will be black. So that kind of keeps us away to doing all that extra. And it comes uh, with the ground coat. So the ground coat is going to go on first and that's going to make sure that everything's in the same color. So when the blue hits it, it goes on nice and even. I got to say to you guys, this is some good paint. I was really surprised the amount of research and development that Eastwood put in in selecting the company that is going to be the best to represent their OEM select paint. And I got to say, top tier, guys. And it's all mixed up and it's ready to be applied. Right before we apply our paint, we're going to use a neutralizer. This is going to kill the static everywhere. And read a lot of comments about the booths and people's complaints, but something like this is good to have in your back pocket because it's going to take all the static away. This is gonna help with a cleaner spray job, okay? You're not gonna have particles sticking to the surface. We're aiming for the cleanest possible spray job out of a home garage. And I think that's exactly what we're gonna to get today based off the theories and the procedures that we're utilizing. Now, it's not a bad idea also to do your walls, right? You don't want things sticking to your walls, so it's not a bad idea there. All right, you can see here we got this thing kicking. It's sucking in nice. So uh, we'll see how well it works here once we start spraying that ground coat. Wow, that went down really nice. I gotta say, it didn't get too foggy in here, but the real test is when we spray clear coat. The only thing I saw was something from myself, a little piece of hair uh, right in here, but uh, we'll get that. We'll get that in the base coat. Uh, once we lay down the base, we'll go ahead and just get that little uh, 600. Uh, it's looking really good. Let me show you the base. So this is the base coat, the OEM Select. And look at that color, that is beautiful. NH621P, beautiful color. We're gonna apply our first coat now and then allow it, give a lot of time in between coats. But uh, we're expecting about three coats of uh, coverage here to get full coverage. Now we just put down that last coat. Now you might have noticed that the floor was starting to really get sucked up and start to lift because we got pretty good suction here. So we had to bring out our extra blower. And now we have air coming through here. 
And what that's done is stabilize the ground really well so it's nice and flat, so it's not hidden up on the underside of the rocker. We just use the blower right here, same blower. So that's a must have if you're gonna use the uh, inflatable trunk. Uh, definitely gonna need it to stabilize the, the boot pressure. And that final adjustment's really gonna help out now. We're ready to clear. You see this thing's looking really good. We gave it about a good 20 minutes. Look how slick that is. Wow. I already know this thing's gonna come out really nice. We got our four to one Glamour Show Car Clear Coat from Eastwood in here. We're ready to lay it down with our Segola, our 4600 Extreme. Man, let's get this thing all slicked in. Well, it cleared out pretty quick after the first coat. Now, the first coat went on pretty good, but there's some dirt and contaminants in the finish right now. But the best thing that we can do for dirt and contaminants is just to really allow it to dry a good 15, 20 minutes so that that clear can start to kick and bridge over a little bit, just a little bit, so our second coat hopefully can lay on that and then we can go from there. But uh, beautiful color, everything's looking pretty good right now. We want to allow it to uh, really flash off here before that second coat. So we'll come back here in uh, about 15, 20 minutes and we'll knock down that second one. And after that first coat, I said, let me try to put on a second coat to see if I can kind of bury it a little bit. Wasn't happening. They do look a touch better, but I ended up trying to uh, bury it and I got a little bit of a run here. And then these, these are horrible. These are really bad. I mean, Granted, there's some dirt in there, here and there. This is not something I can save. This, this does not warrant being saved. This is a 400 grit, I would say, rebase completely because there's gonna be some burn through. So I don't know where it's coming from, but I gotta say, I feel humbled once again. This is what I need in order to help you guys at home better. Because when we're in the spray booth day in and day out, we have ideal circumstances. Although this is an inflatable spray booth, it's not ideal. This is the first time I've used this setup. And this is what's happened. Now, the deck lid, it might look good on camera, but check out fish eyes everywhere. They're everywhere. So fish eyes either come from one or two places, contamination from the panel or contamination from the, um, compressor. I don't think it's the compressor. I spent a lot of money to get the compressor refrigerated, the airlines, cooling system. I don't think it's coming from there. I'm hoping it's a surface issue. I'm hoping I sand this down in a couple days and I rebase it and we see, uh, we see what happens. But uh, this is bad. This is bad, but this is what Paint Society is all about. We've got a problem and we're gonna figure it out. On the next episode, we're gonna show you what we're gonna do, what I think we should do. We're just gonna sand it down here in the boot. We're gonna smooth it back out. We're gonna rebase it. And we're gonna clean it really good before we rebase it and hope that we got something good here. But this is a part of the game, guys. Don't overthink it, it's just paint. It's gonna help you out. And I'm not gonna overthink it. I already know what I gotta do. I hope this video encourages you to understand that, hey, stuff happens even to the professionals, but I'm here to help you guys and figure it out along the way. And if there's something that you possibly think it might be, let me know. I'm all for it. I would love to hear it. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll catch you guys on the next episode.